the key about champagne and other sparkling wines that you open for birthdays and holidays and anniversaries at the restaurant is you don't want to take an eye out mm -hmm. um, because it's very easy to as much as I like to shake it and give it a good pop <laughs> but you need some open land <laughs> this is the mix where we serve up Atlanta and beyond with, with a twist, twist. I'm Maggie Hetzel, back here with Steve. Steve, welcome back. Good to see you. Love, love being here. Great to see you as well. I'm back behind the bar. Yes, you are. It's holiday season. Holiday pour out. And, and it's a holiday pour. Sure, I'll give it to you. <laughs> but it is also uh, time to give gifts. It is time to drink more, time to eat more. Um, and time to finish off 2020. Yes, yes. So we should just drink it all at this point, right? All at one time. Yeah, absolutely. One big gulp. And we've swapped over to, to uh, some wine, some champagne. I'm feeling very uh, a little bubbly. elegant, a little bubbly. Little bubbly. Uh, I know, I make the joke that just serve me one glass of bubbles and I'm done for. I can <laughs> I can handle our liquor all day long, but goodness, I don't know what it does to you. So cheers to you. Cheers. Um, first off is, I've seen so many gift guides on Instagram. How many gift guides can people put out there? I don't know. Every year it seems like there's a million of them. Yeah. And a million of them get thrown away. Well, I mean... I don't know why you'd want a blanket and all this kind of stuff. You already have it in your home. You just need alcohol. That's, that's all you need. It. Like a that's little, the best gift to bring. A little wine, yes. a little champagne, some laughter, good food. I don't need anything else. And it's the perfect excuse to say, hey, I'm going to bring you a present of wine, but let's crack it open now so you get to benefit from half the bottle either way. I do. I'm or depending on how fast you drink it, maybe the whole bottle. <laughs> um, what are you drinking? That, that's actually one of my favorite wines and it is one of the best holiday presents. Yeah, so I am drinking a little La Crema Pinot Noir made for a king. Absolutely. Or a queen. The, the be or a queen. <laughs> so the beauty of this wine is that it goes with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I could sit by the fireplace, you know, cuddle up with the wife, have a nice you know, piece of chocolate, have some marshmallows, or you can have a nice steak. You know, mm -hmm. so it's just so sessionable and it's amazing. And the beauty that I want to, you know, acknowledge today is that they just celebrated 40, their 40 year anniversary, which is amazing. It's not easy to be around in this industry no. for 40 years. Well, by the way, too, I want to say um, this, the whole Christmas turkey, Thanksgiving turkey, we are out of that. Have a steak, eat what yes. you want. I, 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 that sounds terrible. It's probably an unpopular opinion to not eat the traditional Christmas thing, but why do you not want a steak? Right. And Every year. That's my, I'm that's sick. my biggest thing. It's like, just give me what I want to eat. Give me a porterhouse I'm not a stuffing I'm fan. I'm not yeah. a, like a green bean casserole fan. I, I feel you on that. Okay, we're going to have to do a whole other segment on food altogether. Today I'm drinking the Nicolas Foyat Champagne. They are in the Champagne region of France. I don't know how you don't want to live there, go there, stay there. Just give me all the champagne. Yeah, you know, the beauty of champagne is that it's an all year drink. Mm -hmm. You can drink it in the winter, you can drink it in the summer, in the fall. You can drink fall, it in the morning, you can drink it at night. In the morning, <laughs> afternoon, at night. On mimosa. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's an all around amazing product. And then you're you're the beer guy. You, you give me all my uh, beer info and tips. I'm not saying that I can't, but you're pretty, you're pretty uh, experienced, I may add. Uh, what would be your best beer gift? So Stella Artois, definitely during the holiday season, is definitely a good gift to give mm -hmm. because every year when you turn on the TV, you see a Stella Artois Major holiday Christmas commercial, yeah. right? Um, so that's definitely one of the best, and they're still winning awards. Last year in 2019, they got World Beer Best Lo International Lager, which is amazing, yeah. right? But it's also a beer you can drink by the fireplace, drink out in the back while you barbecue, um, while you have a steak, it's an amazing product. Stella Artois also has the Midnight Lager, which is amazing. It has everything that I love. It has hints of chocolate, mm. it has hints of espresso, and it has hint of smoke, just to finish it off. Yeah. And uh, basically what we're saying is you have no lack of alcohol to give everybody because everyone needs it right now. Yes. Steve, I'm coming at you with the uh, sneaker sommelier, as we call it. You a are. Sneaker sound. I'm surprised you haven't put that in your Instagram bio yet. I will soon. Yeah, or you, honestly, just make a whole Instagram about it. Let's let it breathe a little bit. We'll uh, don't let anything breathe. Um, <laughs> so, Christmas presents under the tree for yes. these people, okay? Ooh. First one's good. First one was my personal pick because okay. there's only one shoe people think of when you hear the name. But that's what makes it hard. You gotta, you gotta give me something else, and I don't know how you top it. Michael Jordan. Ooh, I got some. 
Michael Jordans on today. You do? A little Jordan 8 action, Phoenix Sun colored away. You can't give them but, Jordans though. <clears throat> but I, I agree. Yeah. This is tough. I, th this was the point of my, my game. MJ has his own line. Exactly. It's pretty amazing, but I have something. Okay. That's something good. Okay. So when Michael Jordan was in college, he wore Converse. Ah. And people don't know that that's when he identified himself and said during his championship year, he was wearing Converse. He made the shot, the yeah, big shot to win the championship. Shots. He said that he wanted to sign with Adidas or Converse. Adidas didn't give him a deal. Converse had, you know, uh, I guess a thing of riches where they had a lot of athletes already. So they were like, we can't just bring on another. Fast forward to 2020. And I think that if you think about the birth of Michael Jordan and Converse, and you slab that Jordan logo on it, you have the birth of Michael Jordan. A very expensive and pretty baby of tennis shoes. Yeah, <laughs> so sneakers. they actually made, they brought it to fruition, yeah. they brought it to life. So the University of North Carolina athletes were able to get gifted that actual shoe. Next one, um, Kim Kardashian. I'll, I'll dig deep and I'll think. Um, so when Kim and Kanye met, that's when Kanye got the first celebrity endorsed deal with Nike. And one of the most hard to find shoes today is the Red Octobers. Mm. The Kanye collaboration with Nike, Red Octobers, which I think would be amazing for not only Kanye, Kim, and all their kids. All the kids. But we have a child that share the same name. My son's name is Saint. Oh, cool. And Kanye's name is Saint. Yeah. His son's name is Saint. So to have a Saint Red October shoe, and uh, Baby Yoda, which has been the talk of the town. Baby Yoda is everywhere. It is. Everywhere I look. He is. When I open my menu, I see Baby Yoda. You should order steak. Like, it's all like, over it's the all place. all over. Baby Yoda has a really, really cool collaboration. Well, The Mandalorian has a collaboration with Adidas, Adidas Originals. Oh. So you can get it in that colorway of Yoda. You're making me want to go shop right now. I need that. It's the last thing that I need to go do. It, it'll be under the Christmas tree this year for my <laughs> Okay, uh, me. I'm, I'm throwing a curveball at you. It wasn't on, yeah. it wasn't on there, but uh, me, not... what are you putting under the, what am I telling Jake to go get me for Christmas mm. under the tree? Jake. Put him on the spot, he's got to stretch. Yeah, I got to stretch, you know what? Like, he's buying time, so, basically. No, no, no. So. You are, you are a woman of style. You come from a fashionable ilk. <laughs> so I would say definitely get you some Balenciagas. Okay. Some fashion style Balenciagas in all white. But the key to it all is him getting it customly curated for you. So he's gonna add a little flair to it, a little sparkle Can to it. Can you send him like an email with directed steps on how yeah. to do it? Because the he'll sparkle. go, do I, do I go to a store it. and get it? <laughs> no, you, you get the Balenciaga shoe, but I'll work with him to get it custom made for you. I'll put you in touch with him then. Yes, please do. What are some things that you're doing during this holiday season or that you have done that people can tap into? Yeah, I've got a couple of favorites. This is my first Christmas season back in Atlanta after being gone for a couple of years, getting to spend holidays with family. Um, the Jingle Jog is always a blast in Ooh, Piedmont Park. Run so off fun. all the all the stuff and yeah. get it out. Just go eat more. Uh, wear your <laughs> Santa suit. Wear your big mask with the Santa suit. Honestly, you probably could get a beard to cover your whole nose and your uh, mouth anyway. So yeah. it, it's very COVID friendly. Um, your outdoors, uh, I'm, I'm bring the that. dogs, I'm loving that. dress the dog up as a San as Santa. <laughs> it's a blast. Uh, or Rudolph, whatever you want. Oh man, yeah, I gotta get some antlers and yeah. uh, a nose for Scout. Absolutely. Let them run wild. Great idea. Uh, I'll just unleash them. My big mean golden doodle. Anyway, he's off topic. Uh, I've been absolutely love taking my picture with uh, Santa at Phipps. Mm. Good luck to get in at this point because if you haven't made your appointment like now, you're not getting in. The it's the out. hardest thing to get the into. The secret's out and the world knows. Like, I, it was harder than finding like a wedding venue for our <laughs> wedding and finding it. Like, to get my picture with Santa, it had to be a year out. Yeah. Uh, but I do love going. I'm how old and I still go get a picture with Santa, right? It never uh, gets old though. Never gets old, no. And then my final one is something that I've done since I was little. I was approached in first and second grade. Um, they were picking first and second graders from all over the elementary schools in Cobb County. 
and for some reason my bob and bang straight down my face. They asked me to participate in the lighting of the Great Tree at Lenox, the nice. Macy's lighting of the Great Tree. Which is phenomenal. It's so much fun and it's and it is on TV. So it is friendly if people don't feel safe enough to go outside, but uh, I got to sing and dance with Usher. What? When I was, uh, I know, yeah, it's like my theme song. Usher, Usher? First grade on Usher, 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 Usher. Wow. Yep. Um, so I got to dance with him at the lighting of the tree. I'll have to find the VHS tape as it was years <laughs> ago. I All I like remember is almost going down the wrong set of stairs into the crowd rather than the other set of the stairs to head back backstage and um, I froze. That's about the extent of what you can remember when you were a first grader, yeah. but uh, we had eight weeks of rehearsals and they just kind of plucked me out of school and said, you're singing with Usher. So That's not many people know that one about me. That is an amazing story. It was, it's a fun one. That's so a story I, you have to pass on. I, I will. Uh, <laughs> I just gotta find the video to back it up or no one's gonna believe me, but I promise <laughs> I did do it. One of the, uh, the things that I love about Atlanta is, you know, all the trees that are here, uh, you know, it's, it's just open, you mm -hmm. know, it's a beautiful landscape here in Atlanta. And the Atlanta, Atlanta Botanical mm -hmm. Garden. Beautiful. During the holiday season, when they do their holiday lights, like, I've been all over this world. Okay. I've traveled all over. You know, Hong Kong is pretty cool, but this was one of the most epic experiences, really? um, especially being here in Atlanta. You know, go on a date, you know, just oh. walk through and just feel, you know, the crisp air and see the lights. And they're doing it COVID friendly now, so it's a small group at a time. Awesome. I just had an amazing experience with my wife and, and my son loved it. Uh, Steve, it's some people's favorite time of the year. Some people cannot stand it. Christmas movies. I don't know how you can't stand it because you are the Grinch, which yes. will bring us right into a couple of our top movies. Um, we've got three different categories we're going with here, okay? Interesting. Comedy, rom-com, action. I'm probably gonna say I'll be a rom-com expert. You're probably gonna be the action expert. Let's do it. Uh, let's jump in comedy first though, okay? Okay. I'm gonna give you a couple options. Um, you've got Home Alone, Scrooge, um, Grinch, and then my personal favorite, Charlie Brown's Christmas. You cannot- How can you throw that in there? That kind of like, you that's can't, like a classic every year. You can't year, open presents until you watch no it. No competition. Or, the Macy's Christmas Day Parade. Like that's not even a movie, but you it's like a tradition. Maybe this isn't comedy, maybe this is just the tradition movie of the year. So you have to pick one of those as your absolute tradition. Christmas morning, you're watching it before you open presents, what is it? So for me, because it just fills my heart as a child, it's like me watching Goonies. Home Alone just does it for mm -hmm. me. You know, uh, it's, it's one of those movies where you know, you wake up and it's like, all right, I'm opening these gifts with my family and yeah. the house is empty and you're like, what's going on? You know, and then you just go through this adventure of people trying to break into your home and it's just like, as a child, like, oh. that was it for me, yeah. you know? So that really was an amazing movie for me and it's something that I'll never forget. Home Alone 1, 2, 3, it could be Home Alone 50. I'm all, I'm all. all in. I'm all in for them. Yeah, how about yourself? Um, I do love Home Alone. That is more like leading into Christmas. I think Charlie Brown's Christmas yeah. kind of gets me every year. Or The Grinch. Yeah. The Grinch is really pretty. Or pretty. I think The Grinch is a classic. Jim Carrey only. That's the only option. I mean, not the only. I know there's many others that other people love. How do you love. beat Jim? Jim but how do you meet Jim? How do you beat that? How do you beat Dr. Seuss's original Grinch, Jim Carrey, the whole nine yards? Um, the man's still on Saturday Night Live now, you know, doing skits. The guy's just amazing talent. So you know he went on. He used to tear, I mean, he, don't get me wrong, it terrified me when I was younger. <laughs> like, I was truly afraid of the Grinch. But uh, I think comedies, we've got a couple. Top ones, we'll jump to rom-coms, which I know you're you kind of like you over my head, put 100%. my hands up. Um, I'm you got going to sip my wine <laughs> as you talk about But what I'll do while you do action. I'm not even really gonna watch on love actually. It's good, like don't get me wrong, it's good. I'm not gonna discredit it. But Four Christmases is, it just, it is the epitome of what it is like to go to four different family members' houses on Christmas. One, you're pulling down the lights off the um, top of the roof. The other one, you're playing uh, board games with your best friend who married your mom, who's now your stepdad. I mean, you've got all the family dynamics you can get in there in one movie, and it's it's up there for me. If you haven't seen it, it's underrated. Vince Vaughn, Reese Witherspoon. I think I'm going to take a look this 
holiday season Thank you. with my wife. We'll have the Take heated blanket. Have the heated blanket, some little crema, and I'm gonna think about what you said and just lock it. Just lock it. Do it. So when it comes to holiday action movie, mm -hmm. I'm all in on this. So you have Lethal Weapon, which is a classic. That but I've never seen. <clears throat> but when you talk about Die Hard, uh huh, which that, I've never seen. That is it. Bruce Willis is a man of men, a New York City police officer who goes to LA to visit his estranged wife and kids. And he goes to a holiday party that she's having at Nakatomi Tower, which is one of the staples of the movie. People just remember that part, mm -hmm. right? Then you have terrorists. You have a New York police officer, terrorists in LA, it's action, action, and more action. And then you add the strange wife, that's even more action because you know it's going to be fireworks <laughs> all, all day, all over. So it was just an amazing movie. I think Die Hard is just one of the classics that you just sit down, lock in. If I'm going to lock in on Love Actually, you need to watch Die Hard this holiday season. I will watch it and you can give me your synopsis on mine. I'll give you my synopsis on yours, but we want the synopsis from you as well. What it, what are your, some, some of your favorite Christmas movies? Are they on the total opposite spectrum of what we've talked about? Or are you agreeing with Steve and I over here? Because if you aren't, then you're wrong, so. I definitely want to hear what everybody has to say on this. I just need suggestions. Yes. We're going to be inside anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hours and hours of holiday movies. Yes. Be quarantined in Christmas time. <laughs> so during the holiday seasons, you know, this year is a little bit different than last year. Tad. So I think it would be cool if we could share some secrets to the trade. Mm -hmm. You cool with that? Oh yeah, I'm all for it. All right, cool. So I've poured a little bit of beer in my lifetime. A couple million. You know, a little bit of beer in my lifetime. So I want to give you the tools to be fancy during okay. the holiday season, whether it's for yourself and showing off for your significant other, mm -hmm. or if you have family over, this is the perfect pour. Okay. I wish, I wish I had a blindfold like we did before. I would have did it blindfolded. But since we don't, I'll do it with it's all eyes It's convenient that we don't for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna tap into a little Stella Artois. Okay. Perfect pour. So the first thing that you need to do is tilt the glass. By tilting the glass, it allows the glass to get some air mm -hmm. and it pours in so it doesn't foam up as much if you were to pour it straight down. Yeah. So it would fizzle up and just bubble to the top and you're going to have an inch worth of beer <laughs> after the pour. Well, that's also why you're seeing people at restaurants, if you are sitting at a bar, you're going to watch them tilt the glass yeah, when they when they open that tap. That, that is the key. Yeah. It's tilting the glass. So you tilt the glass and you pour. It starts to fill and as you get closer to the top, you just tilt your glass up. It's all on the wrist. And let it beautiful to the top. All on the wrist. Pour. Cheers. All right. You got to take a sip of it if you're going to cheers. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it the proper way. OK. Nose I in. was going to come across this bar if you didn't. Nose in. It smells fresh. Yeah. You see all the bubbles going up means that it's fresh. I'll take my sip. OK. I'm going sparkling wine from the United States. This is the one that six consecutive presidential administrations um, have drank. They can finally agree upon one thing, and it's alcohol. So what <laughs> else would they not be able to agree it upon? Would be alcohol. It is a Iron Horse Wedding Cuvée. Um, first thing I'm going to tell you, there is no special pretty way to take off the foil. Okay, there is none. You just you kind of get up in there if you can, just rip it off. It's not pretty. It's not cool. But whatever. Who cares? Right. Just get it out. All right. So the key to this, though, is I served my parents' restaurants for four years prior or during college, prior to my first job. And man, it, it teaches you some good skills. Pouring beer, you always look like you know what you're doing. The key about champagne and other sparkling wines that you open for birthdays and holidays and anniversaries at the restaurant is you don't want to take an eye out. Because it's very easy to. As much as I like to shake it and give it a good pop, but you need some open land. <laughs> Oh. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. I just I think I shit my pants. <laughs> but did we not see that I didn't even open it? I just yeah, unscrewed yeah. it. Just unscrewed I literally it. just yeah. unscrewed it. Ah! <laughs> All right, ready? Yep, I have we go. champagne on my legs Woo. or sparkling wine. Okay. So first thing first is this is the 
Low and slow is your way to do it, all right? Now, you're just going to carefully take this off. So terrifying. <laughs> this is not good. All right, so you're gonna carefully just pop this off once you've unscrewed it, set it over to your side. Now, this is the key. You always want a towel. This, uh, if for some reason it does pop off and take off, uh, this will keep you safe somewhat. It won't, you won't take it right in the eye. So the key to this is you kind of tilt it over, grab it right underneath this cork right here, and you're just gonna wiggle it off. So, just like that. Sounded amazing. Perfect pop. Perfect pop, and then you're gonna go with the perfect pour. So same key as the beer, you're gonna tilt the glass. Don't ever pour just sitting straight up. It's gonna, same thing, just fizz all the way over. But you do want a little bit of those bubbles on top, so you're just gonna continue with the pour and pop it right off. Voila. Cheers. Sorry, I'm still a little shaky. <laughs> I was like, it's gonna take off again, it's gonna do it. <laughs> so Megan, you know what I wanna tap into? Something that happens every year, mm -hmm. and by the first, second, third day, yeah. kinda of falls by the wayside. Done for. New Year's resolutions. I definitely want to get your insight on that because okay. I have my thoughts on it. Mine might be like an unpopular opinion. I actually learned this from um, some friends in a podcast I listened to and they, and I've taken this and kind of ran with it, they do something October Lucian, November Lucian. So I'm always like, head, just get head, me in the front. Give me a head start. start. Head start I love it. I'm the first one to leave <laughs> when I have to follow somebody. I just, I need to, I need to get on the road. So. For me, I think an October Lucian or a November Lucian, even if you're starting it, here's my theory. It's not that hard to eat if you wanna eat healthy per se. It's not that health hard to do it during the holidays. Give yourself those two days, Christmas, maybe Christmas Eve, and Thanksgiving. Eat what you want. The what rest of the time- What about the leftovers? That's like a week's worth of food. Well, that's where you gotta, you know, that's where you gotta have some <laughs> discipline there, Steve. Okay. Uh, so you wanna, you start early, you get in the gyms before everybody else, you get on that train, so then when everyone's kind of starting, you're already a month, two months through it, and you're like, man, I feel good. I'm gonna keep on with this, because then you see people start falling off. You're like, I've been at this two months. And if you've made it through the holidays, you've made it through one of the toughest parts of the year of being healthy or not spending a lot of money. This is definitely a different year. This is yeah. different. These are unprecedented times. And sometimes you want comfort, so maybe yeah, you don't start you in yeah. November. And I know a lot of people started the year off with some resolutions. They're like, hey, I'm gonna attack this year. I'm gonna go forward, but life happened. Right? To everybody. Life happened to everybody. Yeah. And that's definitely something I want people to internalize and take in. No matter your approach this year, if you decided to just sit on the couch and watch Netflix movies all day, you're right. If you decided to take online courses and want to enhance mm -hmm. you know, your professional career, you're right. There's no right or wrong answer no. this year. This year was the year to actually tap in, into the energy that fulfills you, right? You got to so, carry yourself. Yeah, exactly. So to add to what you just said, I think if you're gonna get, get a head start, <laughs> it's not only just saying what you want to do, I think there's goals and then there's systems. Right? And attainable goals. Attainable goals, but the systems is the key. Yeah. So if you say, all right, I want to lose, you know, 10 pounds, you know, in 2021, that's the goal. What is the system you're putting in place to achieve that goal? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stop eating after 8 o'clock. Yeah. I'm going to do an hour workout first thing in the morning to get my body going and revving it up. So if there's one thing that I want people to take away, it's understanding that there's goals, which we all have, where we fall short is applying the system. Yeah. So if you put the system in play, it'll be much more attainable to achieve your resolution for this year. Well, not everything's attainable either. Yeah. You have to be real with yourself. At the end of the day, if you yeah. think, oh, I can lose 50 pounds in three months, that's just not attainable. So I think it's so important about like looking yourself in the mirror and giving yourself grace. Man, giving yourself grace during this year is one of the biggest things too. Yep. Don't sit here and say, I need to do this, 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 and this. Because at the end of the day, is losing 50 pounds gonna make you happier? And and that's what you gotta look at. And to add to that, you know, it's gonna be hard to do it by yourself. Yeah. You're gonna need a network of people. So whether it's doing a weekly Zoom with a friend that can just give you that motivation, that energy, or a text thread, or just surround yourself with the right people that are gonna push you to be a better version of yourself, mm -hmm. is super important. More now than ever, especially this year. Yeah. You know, this is the year of just collaboration, working together, and just moving forward to attaining those goals. So. And I think through everything, 
this is a good year to look at the people surrounding you and see who has shown up for you through this year. Because at some point this year, everyone has needed somebody to show up for them. And once you get all that aligned, you'll pick up your Stella Midnight Lager. <laughs> Cheers to it all. Or your Nicholas Poyat. Yacht. Yes. And have a nice sip. Mm -hmm. Take in 2021. If you don't hit your goals, just have some of this. It'll make you feel better. Or go to themixga.com for more awesome content. It'll make you really laugh. Either one works, right? Facts. Absolutely. 100%. Happy holidays, everybody. Enjoy happy, your time with your be family. Happy holidays. Cheers. Cheers.